The Guardian News. By Paul Lewis in Washington, Spencer Ackerman in New York and Martin Chuloff in Beirut. Obama hails Arab allies and says ISIS offensive is not America's fight alone. Airstrikes on ISIS targets in Syria carried out with support of five Arab nations as military chiefs say campaign likely to last years. U.S. President Barack Obama claimed the backing of five Arab nations for intensive military attacks against Islamic State ISIS targets in Syria on Tuesday showed the offensive was not America's fight alone, as his military chiefs swore the intensive air assault was only the start of a sustained campaign likely to last years. Overnight strikes against ISIS took place in concert with five Arab allies, Bahrain, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Qatar, and marked a substantial escalation in the campaign against the militant group also known as ISIL. The U.S.-led strikes were carried out with support from the five Sunni Arab monarchies and emirates, using fighter jets, bombers and Tomahawk missiles to blast 22 targets in Syrian territory. No European allies participated in the military action, which also included unilateral strikes by the U.S. against a separate, Al-Qaeda-aligned group known as Khorasan, which was targeted west of Aleppo. America is proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with these nations on behalf of our common security, Obama said. The strength of this coalition makes it clear to the world that this isn't America's fight alone. Above all, the people and governments of the Middle East are rejecting ISIL and standing up for the peace and security that the people of the region and the world deserve. Despite Obama's efforts to stress the involvement of Arab nations, the Pentagon conceded that the vast majority of airstrikes were carried out by the U.S. Although the U.K. did not participate in Tuesday's operation, Prime Minister David Cameron expressed support for military action against ISIS. This is not a fight we can opt out of, Cameron told NBC. Russia, Syria's main international ally denounced the U.S.-led strikes as a violation of Syria's sovereignty. But the regime of Bashar al-Assad, which counts ISIS as an opponent in its protracted civil war, confirmed it was notified of the operation in advance and did not offer any resistance. Obama said Washington had the support of more than 40 nations who have offered to help with the broader effort against ISIS by strengthening Iraq forces and Syrian opposition fighters, cutting off the militant group's financing and stemming the flow of foreign fighters into and out of the region. At least 120 militants militants and eight civilians were killed in the U.S.-led strikes, according to the British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which monitors military activity in Syria. It said 70 of the killed militants were from ISIS, while the other 50 it described as being aligned with the Nusra Front. The parent organization of the Khorasan Cell and Al-Qaeda's preferred affiliate in Syria. About 100 critically injured fighters were taken to Iraq for treatment, it added. The eight reported eight civilian casualties, included three children. Reports about militants or civilians killed in the strikes could not be independently verified. Mayville said the Pentagon was unaware of any civilian casualties, adding that any reports of civilian deaths would be investigated. The switch in focus to ISIS strongholds in Syria marked a major turning point in Obama's foreign policy. You are seeing the beginning of a sustained campaign, and strike like this in the future can be expected, said Lt. Gen. William Mayville, the Director of Operations for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, during a Pentagon briefing. Asked about the possible duration of the military offensive, he replied, I would think of it in terms of years. Mayville said the Pentagon was still assessing the effects of the strikes, which occurred in three waves, mostly carried out by the U.S., did not specifically target individual militant leaders. However they were considered successful, with minimal collateral damage, he said. Rear Admiral John Kirby, the Pentagon's chief spokesman, added, while it is not our policy to discuss future operations, I can tell you that last night's strikes were only the beginning. After his remarks on the White House lawn, Obama immediately boarded a flight to the United Nations in New York, where he is under intense pressure to build a broader international backing for a war against militants which has already been going on in Iraq for over a month.
Large explosions were reported in the early hours of Tuesday morning in the main ISIS stronghold of Raqqa, in eastern Syria, in attacks that reportedly killed more than 120 militants and several civilians. Buildings that had been used openly as ISIS command centers in Raqqa were destroyed. However, they had long been evacuated as momentum built towards the attacks, and their occupants had melted into the streets of the city, which in the middle of last year became the first Syrian city to fall completely outside the control of the regime. Syrian Air Radar Passive The U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, whose leader, General Lloyd Austin, is the commanding officer for the new airstrikes, confirmed the U.S. struck ISIS targets in the eastern triangle stretching from Raqqa to Deir Ezzer to al Hazaka as well as south to Abu Kamil near the former border with Iraq's western Anbar province. CENTCOM said its targets included fighters, training compounds, headquarters and command and control facilities, storage facilities, a finance center, supply trucks and armed vehicles. It said that 47 missiles were fired from the USS Arleigh Burke and USS Philippine Sea. Operating from international waters, adding that all aircraft involved in the strikes returned safely. Obama's ambassador to the UN, Samantha Power, gave her Syrian counterpart an advance indication of likely military attacks against ISIS in the country, but strongly denied any military coordination with Assad, against whom the U.S. nearly went to war last year. We warned Syria not to engage U.S. aircraft, said Jensaki, the State Department spokeswoman, in a statement.